Mm -hmm. um, ladies and gentlemen and children, I want to be very proud to introduce to you Wilbur. And Wilbur is a wonderful little guy, a little doggy, who, uh, oh, and this is Wilbur, and I just wanted to show everybody Wilbur and um, talk about what a wonderful dog he is. And uh, I talk a lot about DNA, I know, and I'm holding some very, very precious DNA right here. Mm -hmm. And this uh, creature has uh, inspired me a great deal. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, so I just want everyone to see Wilbur and uh, and uh, say hello. We'll. Uh, Does that make yeah. sense? Yeah. You said you had questions. What no, questions do we need you to have? trust in you? You don't need to. That's the whole point. Okay. You don't need to trust me at all. You don't need to trust me at all. But why do you want other people to know you? Why do you want to take this video? I'm not sure I do really, that's the whole point. Maybe you can shut it off at any time. I'm not sure I want people to know really. I'm not sure. I'm not sure I want to be famous. You see what mm -hmm. I'm saying, right? Well, you could be famous. I could be, but who cares? Huh? Yeah, because you try to tell other people what the fact thing is. Yeah, so what are the facts? Mm -hmm. The facts are they don't tell you the facts, right? Yeah. They don't tell you the facts. Mm -hmm. Because why? Because then why they stop making money. Yeah. Right? Because they don't need to tell you the facts. Otherwise, they cannot make money. Well, there you go. See, that's exactly it, right? <laughs> I did a calculation, by the way, a few weeks ago. Yeah. For the omega naught cutoff, 2 root beta over m times sine 1 half k. I did this calculation for DNA. So what's that? Well, that's, that's a good mean? question. This is, the, okay. this is the range that DNA vibrates in, mm -hmm. right? Well, or any linear crystal. Remember I have the DNA? So W is the weight. No, no, that's frequency. A frequency. Yeah, 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 yeah. Actually, it's angular frequency, see? Well, okay, and then I said that, well, you know, uh, at each uh, loop here, I had a, a mass. Uh, whoops, I didn't draw that very well. At each loop, I had a, well, I, I call this. Spring. Yeah, yeah, that's a spring. And then uh, at this loop, I have another mass, mm -hmm. right? So I added up all of the insides there and I came out with a number. I came out with a number, I'll say 800 atomic mass units. And of course I put that down there. Well then beta, I stole that from sodium chloride. My beta is a sodium chloride crystal um, elastic constant, which worked out to be uh, 6.93, I think, times 10 to the 5 kilograms, and then it'll be uh, seconds to the minus 2. So then when I take the 800 and put it in here times 1.66 times 10 to the minus 27 kilograms, and I take the square root of that and multiply it by 2, I came up to 1.39 times 10 to the 15 hertz. Mm -hmm. which is about the cutoff frequency for a solid, for a crystal. So I, I came up kind of close. I didn't show all my arithmetic, which I apologize for, but my cutoff frequency is about right, according to what I read. But again, the calculation is not so good because I stole the spring constant from sodium chloride. This is not sodium <laughs> chloride, but what the heck, right, you know. But, but yeah. why, why would it vibrate? 
Do you use any medicine or do you use... Uh, why does it vibrate? Yeah, because you, you are telling us the frequency. Yeah. And so, so why don't you think that it's a little still? I mean, uh, it's, it's a little why does in, it vibrate? in a steady situation. Well, it has to vibrate. It has to be vibrate. It has to vibrate because the nature of this... Uh, well, like I said before, I said a couple lectures ago, if you want to call them lectures, if you take the carbon-carbon bond, this is actually a spring. Okay? In the, in the carbon-carbon bond, you've got, you've got uh, vibration here, see? Okay. So that you can see in all of these, in all of these, um, you know, this is sugar phosphate, sugar phosphate, you're going to have this springing action. It'll be all through this uh, uh, crystal. This is the crystal again. So even even though he's, uh, hel he's healthy, the, the DNA still vibrates. Well, see, that was the whole thing. You see, if the DNA is healthy, that will mean M won't be zero. If M is zero, then this thing will go to infinity. We won't have any vibration. Mm -hmm. So that, yeah, the healthy DNA has got to have some vibration. And when, uh, at the, um, when K is equal to, uh, yeah, pi over A, at the cutoff, when K is equal to pi over A, when this is vibrating at its maximum, then this vibration will be the order of 10 to the 15. Now, of course, this vibration is called, uh, I believe it's vibration in the normal mode. It's not the acoustic, it's not the optical mode, it's the normal mode, you see. But that normal mode means that it's sort of vibrating all together, see. But actually, it doesn't really vibrate that way all the time because it's vibrating like this too. See? Mm -hmm. This back and forth. Opposite this way is the optical mode, which is a higher frequency. So it's vibrating like this in the normal mode, but in the optical mode, at the same time it's if it is, if this it is related with the frequency and uh, but if I use any music then then I can if I mean uh, you know, if I use the music and then I can vibrate the DNA. No, I don't think it's, it's not going to hear your music. I don't think this is the same kind of thing. I don't think it's going to hear the music. If at I all. use the, a, I mean, I mean a suitable frequency and uh, for example, sound. And it's being you don't have it. I don't think you could generate anything that high. See, mm -hmm. so this frequency is really, really high. Uh -huh. We don't have anything that yet that will generate frequency that high. Mm -hmm. The point I'm trying to get at here though is this frequency is related to the genetic code, to the genetic transfer of information. That's the point I'm getting at here, is that this, these vibrations throughout the DNA have got to influence the genetic coding system which is, again, DNA, RNA, protein, you see? Because I'm saying in this model that this, I can approximate the DNA vibrations with this spring, you see? So everything I derive for this spring system, I'm saying the DNA behaves in a similar manner, you see? That's the idea behind this model. See, this spring thing is a model. DNA is not exactly the spring, but it's the best I can cook up right now. Hopefully in a couple weeks I can cook something better up. But I've been busy lately and I haven't had, <laughs> I haven't had time to work on this too much. But uh, that's basically it this calculation. That's today's show. And Wilbur, of course. Today's show we could call the Wilbur Lecture in Physics. The Wilbur Lecture in Physics.
Wilbur, whoops, that doesn't look good. The Wilbur Lecture in Physics. So today's calculation was this cutoff frequency, right? Like that. Mm -hmm. Just to give you some idea of how fast this is vibrating. This is a tremendous, tremendously high frequency. What is it? 10 to the 9 times 10 to the 6. So that's 1 million times 1 billion. So what kind of theory do you want to develop? You, you that's a good question. Yeah, yeah, I don't know where I'm going yet. Last time I said quantum field theory, remember? Mm -hmm. I want to develop a quantum field theory for this. But where that quantum field theory goes, I don't know. But I believe one can be developed. Because again, I've got P squared over 2M plus the potential energy K, let's say, X, what is it, L minus X, L, what, L plus 1, say, that kind of thing. Once I have the kinetic energy and the potential energy, then I can develop this thing. I haven't done it yet, but I'm going to. Mm -hmm. Maybe tomorrow. Well, not the whole thing tomorrow, but you see. Oh, yes, and then, of course, from that, maybe we can talk about like I said a minute, uh, 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 we excite this DNA with a compound. The compound that I use excites the DNA. And then, of course, the DNA kicks out information, like according to this, you see, it sends out information, and this information will be quantized. That's the quantum field theory. So the genetic code is quantized, see? The genetic code is quantized. The genetic code is quantized, see? But even Mendel said that. Mendel said that in 1866, right? That if you can only get, if you put in a certain amount of information, you only get a certain amount of information out. Finite here, finite there, right? For instance, you don't put in, say, two parts and you get out half. You have to get, well, you put, you put a certain amount in here and you get a discrete amount out. It can't be half of, a half of, you cannot get half, let's say, a um, half of, um, I, you can't get half of an information bit, let's say, you see? So, so whatever goes in here has got to come out in a quantized way. You see, your contribution is in uh, this structure. I mean, uh, you have tried to describe the DNA structure, and, uh, and is this your, your invention? That no, I think other people do this as well. Mm -hmm. Other people do this kind of thing. Okay. But I haven't read their papers yet. But this is my idea based again on this compound that I've been testing for several years now. Mm -hmm. And again, the data, DNA, RNA, protein. Right? Because I, I know how to, I know how to cure infection.